and jello that will probably suggest lots of others to you. The first is very simple, just a colorful dish of cherry jello topped off with whipped cream. Another idea is raspberry jello molded over luscious canned peaches. Or you might even try combining sliced fresh strawberries with strawberry jello, surrounding the dish with more strawberries. Jello has six delicious flavors, and each one can be combined to make an almost endless array of delightful new delicacies. Only just be sure to use genuine jello. Ask for it by name. Look for the big red letters on the box. They spell jello. And now we bring to you the eyes and ears of Hollywood, that rambling reporter who brings you all the news, Jack Scoop Benny. <laughs> uh, Mary, did Paramount call yet? No, Jack. Well, <laughs> it's hello again. This is Scoop Benny, your Hollywood reporter, coming to you by the way of all flags. With the latest news report through the courtesy of the Hollywood Hammer, sees all and knocks everything. All the news that was overlooked by Luella Parsons, Lloyd Pantages, and Jimmy Fiddler. Of course, folks, I'm no Luella Parsons, and I'm no Pantages. You're no Fiddler, either. <laughs> Quiet, Mary. Here it is. Let's go. Culver City, California. What's funny about Culver City? <laughs> uh, during rehearsal of a fight scene, Clark Gable knocks out his firing partner. He is now ready to meet Smelling any day or Garbo any evening. <laughs> Liverpool, England. <laughs> Anne Harding, screen star, arrives by femur and slides down gangplank. There's no truth to the report that she slid down the banister. <laughs> Los Angeles. Los Angeles, California. Men's sports clothes here strike new note in wild patterns. Several movie stars seen wearing Zion checks. <laughs> uh, Beverly Hills, California. There's a rumor that Robert Taylor and Eleanor Powell are that way. They quarreled on Sunset Boulevard yesterday, and he went that way, and she went that way. Man. <laughs> Hollywood, California. Johnny Green, orchestra leader, makes screen tests and has tooth x-rayed all in one day. Tooth starts working at RKO tomorrow. <laughs> MGM, California. There's a $200 reward being offered for the return of a valuable gold watch stolen from the director during the filming of Crime Doesn't Pay. Uh, what time is it, Jack? Quiet. <laughs> Pacific Ocean, California. Eddie Cantor, famous star, and his wife, Ida, sail for Honolulu for a little son. Oh, I thought that was good. <laughs> now, wasn't that good? Oh, Jack, I've got one. A son? No, a news item. Oh, well, read it, Mary. Hollywood, California. There is no truth to the report that Jack Benny is still wearing his winter underwear. Very good. San Pedro, California. Pedro? Ma Shi Jang, romantic Chinese film star, rise from the Orient today. He is known as the Almanide Gable, and they say he's the nut. Oh, Mary? No, they didn't call you. Oh, NBC Studio, Jack Benny, radio and picture star, recently walked out of the Paramount Studio because his part was too small. His phone number is Oxford 7071, and he doesn't care whether they call him or not, especially during the day when he'll be at home. Home, home on the phone, da-da-da. Mm, late bulletin, Don Wilson, radio announcer, says his favorite actress is Joan Crawford. His favorite dish, Jell-O, and his favorite month, August. Well, that fits, Joan, Jell-O, and August. Is there anything you want to say, Don? No, oh, everybody knows the flavors. But you, if you insist, Jack, I'll... Who's uh, insisting? <laughs> I'll repeat those six delicious words. Strawberry, raspberry, cherry, orange, lemon, and lime. Now, please don't bother me again. I won't, I won't. Thank uh, you. In Istimo, California, there's a rumor that Johnny Green and his orchestra will play Ginger Rogers' new song hit, I Can't Understand. Uh, play softly, boys, in case the telephone rings. <laughs> that, was, uh, that was Johnny Green and his orchestra playing I Can't Understand, written by Ginger Rogers. <laughs> 
Very good, Ginger. You listening? Ah, it was very good, Johnny. That was great. Uh, was it soft enough, Jack? Oh, sure. And Paramount didn't call you? Well, maybe they did, and the wire was busy. Oh, I see. <laughs> anyway, they're bluffing, so if it's a game of bluff, I can play it, too. Say, after all, who can they get? William Powell is working. Montgomery is tied up with wars. <laughs> <laughs> Say, Gary Cooper can't play a violin. Neither can you. <laughs> anyway, Johnny, they're just waiting to hear from me. If Mr. Genza thinks I'm going to play the part of a butler, he's crazy. Did he call me yet, Mary? No, he's not that crazy. <laughs> Stubborn, isn't he? Well, let's go ahead with the program. And tonight, folks, I want to introduce as our guest stars of the evening the two fellows who wrote Love and Blue. And well, that was uh, last week's program, Jack. Pull yourself together. I think Paramount's got you a little bit worried. Me worried? <laughs> don't make me laugh. I don't worry about anything. Just... Hello, Jack. I'm sorry I'm late. Where have you been, Kenny? Shopping. I got some smoke glasses, a swimming pool, and a beret. <laughs> <laughs> Must have been dollar day. <laughs> and you know I got a yacht, too. Oh, a yacht. Let's see it. It's in the swimming pool. When it comes out, let's see it. Oh, sure. Say, Jack, did Paramount call yet? No, Kenny, they know it's useless. I mean, I'm not going to take a small part like that. Hmm, me a butler. I don't blame you, Jack. You're not worried, are you? No, Don. I mean, Johnny. I mean, Kenny. You left me out. Pardon me, Gracie. <laughs> Say, Jack. Jack, are you really going through with that idea about having your own company? Why, certainly, Johnny. The Benny Mount film. You're bluffing. I am, eh? Well, you wouldn't think so if you saw that envelope I got from the Bank of America this morning. What was in it? A blotter. <laughs> it was not. Oh, look, Jack, look. Look here. Here's a notice from the theatrical paper Variety. It says, uh, Phil Baker leaves New York for Hollywood to make a picture. Oh, him, huh? Well, he's a nice fellow. He deserves it. Wait a minute, let me see that. Hmm. Bill Baker coming to Hollywood to play the star in film. Oh, yeah? Say, Mary, that, uh, that couldn't be a Paramount, could it? I don't think so, Jack. Stop worrying. Who's worrying? Hey, I wonder if, say, they, they couldn't, uh, uh, Mary, get Paramount on the phone quick. All right, Jack, stop shaking. Shaking. <laughs> Operator, get me down. 2411. I mean, Hollywood, 2411. And I'm shaking. <laughs> Mary, look, find out in a roundabout way if Phil Baker is taking my place. Don't tell him who you are. Leave it to me. Right. Hello, Pamela? Yeah. Uh, well, this is, uh, uh, who are you calling, Jack? Oh, hey, anybody. Tell him you're Mae West. Oh, all right. Hello. Oh, some information, please. <laughs> uh, this is Mae West. Mickey? <laughs> Say, have you signed up a fellow by the name of... Oh, ask, uh, ask in a roundabout way. I know, Jack. Why? Uh, hello. Have you signed up Phil Baker in a roundabout way to take Jack Benny's place? <laughs> oh, Mary. You did? Well, then Jack quit. If you think you can treat him like that, you've got another... Give me that phone, Mary. Hello, uh, Mr. Lyson? Uh, this is Lawrence Tibbet speaking. <laughs> yes. On the road to Mandalay, where the flying fishes play. <laughs> Say, uh, uh, Mr. Lyson. <laughs> Mr. Lyson, is, uh, is Phil Butler going to play the part of a baker? I mean, is Phil Baker going to play the part of a butler in the big broadcast? What's that? You think he may? Oh, well, that's fine. <laughs> Have you seen him lately since he went off his diet? <laughs> yes, yes, I think he's very clever, that is, if you care for that type of work. <laughs> well, uh, goodbye, Mr. Lyson. Yes, yes, thank you, yes, I will. Goodbye. He sent his regards to you, Mary. He did. He's more nervous than I am. He thought I was Jack Benny. <laughs> so Baker's really coming out here, huh, Jack? I think so. Say, there's room for all of us, you know. Well, don't worry about it, Lawrence. Say, who's... <laughs> who's worrying? Let's go ahead with the program. Gee. And now, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Burns and Allen, I mean, Kenny Baker, will sing... Uh, what are you going to sing, Kenny? I'm going to sing a brand new number that Johnny Green and I wrote just called, uh, Gee, It's a Thrill. <laughs> it's that I, I mean, just it's called wrote. Gee, It's a Thrill. Gee, It's a Thrill. Oh, a little song you and Johnny wrote, huh? Yeah. This must be opportunity night. <laughs>
Well, sing, composer. See, how can he write a song when I'm so upset? That's youth for you. <laughs> just heard Johnny Green and his orchestra playing Robins and Roses with Johnny at the piano. Home company, where Jack is making super colossal pictures until Paramount calls him up. <laughs> oh, Max? Yes, I'm still looking for a story. Send over all the authors you can. I don't care. Mix them up. Oh, Miss Livingworth? Yes, <laughs> yes Mr. Bensky. <laughs> Somebody left a script on my desk. Call the janitor. Uh, who was it? I don't know. Everybody thinks they can write. Get the name of this, Grand Hotel by Vicki Baum. Probably some schoolgirl. <laughs> Say, Jack, I wrote a story that I think would be swell for you. You did? What's the name of it? Puppets of Passion. Hmm. <laughs> puppets of Passion? Yeah. What are puppets, Jack? <laughs> Small dogs and don't bother me. We're not making any animal pictures. Come in. Mr. Benny? Yes. I came to see you about a story I've written. My name is uh, Kenneth G. Baker. Oh, what's the G for? Hit the thrill. <laughs> well, have a chair. So you've written a story, huh? Yes, it's called A Message to Garcia. Hmm, A Message to Garcia. He'd rather have a message from Gensler. <laughs> Quiet. A Message to Garcia. What part would I play in that? A telegraph blank. Well, that's, that's better than a butler. I like that idea, though. What do you want for it? $50 cash. Oh, you must have cash. Absolutely. <laughs> what are you laughing at, Mary? The message to Garcia is collect. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Baker, but I don't think I can use it. Good day. All right, be a butler. <laughs> Wise guy. I hope he sells it to Paramount. Say, Jack, I know who, an author who lives in Pasadena, and he's got a swell story. You want to go over and see him? Go over and see him. If he's got a story, let him come over here. He can't come over here. Why not? He's got a story, but no shoes. <laughs> oh, well, if he's got gloves, let him walk on his hands. <laughs> come in. Oh, bonjour, bonjour. <laughs> Uh, have I the honor of addressing Mr. Jacques Penet? That is me. <laughs> I am a writer and I have the story for you that is magnifique. Mm. So you're a writer, eh? And what is your name? Pierre. Oh, Pierre. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he looks like an alligator. Maybe he's an alligator, Pierre. <laughs> I'll apologize for that one. <laughs> now, what's the name of your story? The Massage to Garcia. The Massage to Garcia. <laughs> what do I play in that? The Masseur. What? The Masseur, Monsieur. No, oh, I hate those dual roles. <laughs> Mary, do you know what he's talking about? Monsieur. Now, listen, Pierre, have I got a good part in this picture? Oui, oui. Hmm, how big is the part? Very wee oui, wee. Oui. That's what I was afraid of. Well, I don't want that story. It's too wee oui, wee oui for me. Good day, Pierre. <laughs> All right. Oh, well. Get out of here. <laughs> what do you think of that guy, Mary? Wipe that lipstick off your cheek. <laughs> I don't know what we're going to do about a story. We've got to get into production. I need a story. Well, here's something that just came in. Read this, Jack. Hmm. hmm let's see. Store burns down. Needs money desperately. Everything gone. Why, this is the silliest thing I've ever read. What is this? A letter from your father. <laughs> now, well, why didn't you tell me? Hello? Mr. Benny's office? Yes, I'll tell him. Uh, there's an author to see you, Jack. He's waiting downstairs. Another one? Mm hmm What's his name? San Luis Ab 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 Abispo Pedro. <laughs> San Luis Abispo Pedro Don Martinez Jr. <laughs> tell him to come up one at a time. <laughs> He said you can call him San Luis Obispo, Pedro for short. If I can get that far, I'll go the whole way. <laughs> Come in. In a little spent time, don't you? Hello, hello. Just a la mañana, stranger. <laughs> well, 
Well, so you're San Luis Obispo Pedro Don Martinez Jr., eh? Uh, they'll call me Clem for short. <laughs> call me a star, Clem. Well, I'll fool you, partner. <laughs> Uh, San Bernardino, Tut. <laughs> the feeling is mutual, Valencia. <laughs> Sacramento, Galiciana. <laughs> Mazel tov, senior. <laughs> so you're an author, eh? I have done tootin' my fancy cavalry. <laughs> I'm the greatest author in all Mexico. Mm, I thought we left you in Brooklyn. <laughs> Say, don't get so technical. <laughs> That one nearly threw you. <laughs> hey, what kind of a story have you got for me, Schleppo? Hi, Jackie boy, have I got a story for you? It's gigantic with a couple of zoo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it is, eh? What's the name of it? A message to Garfinkel. <laughs> And I suppose, I suppose I play a butler again. If not, go ahead and sue me. Now, wait a minute, Slepperman. I've gone through this before. I need a story with a sock in it. Fine authors. No socks, no shoes. Well, I can't wait any longer. I've got to get started. I'll give you $10 for it. All right, all right. But believe me, that's the lowest price I ever took for that story. Here you are. Adios, signore. <laughs> Say, listen, if you need any cleaning and pressing, call me out. La <laughs> Cacaraxa! At last, we've got a story. Where's my board of directors? Here I am, Jack. Now, listen, fellas, we're going through with this. At first, I was only bluffing, but now it's different. Will you stick with me? You, you bet. bet. Do we need Paramount? You, you bet. bet. <laughs> let's take off our coats and get to work. Right. Come on, you cameraman, get rolling. Come on, you actors on the set. Hey, Matt, let's have those lights. Telegram for Jack Benny. Telegram for Jack Benny. Wait a minute, boys. A telegram, eh? Here, give it to me. Well, well, fellas, it's from Paramount. Paramount? Uh, what does it say? Hmm. Uh-huh. <laughs> I thought so. Well, boys, the Benny Mount Film Company disbands right now. You can draw your paychecks and go home. What happened, Jack? Listen to this. Jack Benny, Benny Mount Studio, Hollywood. Please return to Paramount at once. Stop. We have added another line to your part. <laughs> Signed, Lou Gensler. Hooray! <laughs> I knew they'd come across. Play job. It's a cinch to make homemade ice cream nowadays. Just listen. There's really no simpler or more economical way of making extra good ice cream than with Jell-O ice cream powder. You use less cream and actually get more ice cream. And this is all you have to do. Just open a package of Jell-O ice cream powder... Add some sugar, some milk and cream, and pour the mixture into the freezing trays of your automatic or ice refrigerator. Your work's finished then, and in just a little while, you'll have a generous quart and a half of ice cream. Wonderfully smooth, rich, and creamy, real old-fashioned ice cream. And you can depend on getting the same grand, mellow results if you prefer to use an ordinary hand freezer. Give your family a treat one night this week. Give them vanilla or chocolate ice cream made with Jell-O ice cream powder. If your grocer hasn't put Jell-O ice cream powder in stock yet, be sure he orders it for you. Remember the name, Jell-O Ice Cream Powder. number of the 38th program in the new Jell-O series. And we'll be back again next Sunday night for our last broadcast of this season. And as our guest of honor, we are going to have a big movie star on our program. Who's it going to be, Jack? Me. <laughs> Good night, folks. The melody All My Life is from the picture Laughing Irish Eyes. This program originates in the NBC studios in Hollywood. This is the National Broadcasting Company. <laughs>